Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It's great to be together in God's house. Did you guys all get that little wake-up call in, in early this morning? That little thunder and lightning, a little light show out the window, a little crash of thunder. Um, it wasn't the thunder and lightning that woke me up. It was my three kids in bed with us. So um, they said, uh, yeah, it's time to uh, get up, I guess. But uh, it's good to be together. The rain has stopped. The thunder has moved on. Uh, the sun is shining. And Jesus Christ is Lord. And God is on his throne. And God is good all the time. And we've come here to worship. There's no other place I'd rather be than right here, right now, with all of you, uh, despite what y'all look like. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. No other place I'd rather be than with God's people in God's house to worship him together as a family. Let me read to you from Philippians 2. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, do we have encouragement in Christ? Amen. Absolutely. Any comfort from his love, do we have comfort in his love? Amen. Absolutely. Any participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself. By taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. That's what Jesus Christ, being in the very form of God, has done for us. That's what he came to do. That's what he modeled in his life. And we are called to be Christ's followers. What an amazing example he has set for us. What an amazing Savior and Lord that we have, and one who is so worthy of our praise. And so let's do that through song today. Let's stand together. Let's sing him praise, for he is worthy. He is a span in vanity and pride. Caring not, my Lord was crucified. Knowing not it was for me, he died at Calvary. My God's word at last, my sin I learned. And I trembled at the lost word. Till my guilty soul in glory. Grace was free. 
your grace was free there your pardon multiplied to me there my burden so found liberty at Calvary at Calvary give him praise this morning his word
Well, this morning we will recite and confess together two catechism question and answers. Two for the price of one today. Lucky you. But they go together. And so the question 89, it asks this, what is the dying away of the old self? So when we come to faith in Christ, when we are redeemed by Christ and the Holy Spirit comes in and regenerates us, what takes place? What changes happen? What is this dying away of the old self, our flesh, and the coming to life of the new, that we are a new creation in Christ? Well, let us answer the first question together. What is the dying away of the old self? To be genuinely sorry for sin, to hate it more and more, and to run away from it. The follow-up question is this. What is the coming to life of the new self? Let us recite and confess these truths together. It is wholehearted joy in God through Christ and a delight to do every kind of good as God wants us to. Amen. Well, kids, I want you to stay for just a, a few moments uh, because we want you to be able to see and partake in this time with us. Uh, we have the privilege today uh, to receive 11 new members into our church family. Uh, yes, amen. 11 new brothers and sisters in Christ. And so uh, for those that are being received into a membership of the church. <laughs> Sorry, we got to look at that picture for a moment. <laughs> for better or for worse, Adam, you're with us, I guess. <laughs> um, but if you are being received as a, a members of this church, will you come on up here uh, with me this morning? And actually, uh, I'll come down to you. We can just line up down here. I got a cheat sheet for you if you like it. Anybody else want a cheat sheet? <laughs> There's a couple, you know, things that you got to say and make this thing official. Everybody get one? Everybody that needs one, get one. Look at this fine crew. Isn't this great? All right. Uh, we're so excited. They, they went through the, the membership classes and uh, just a, what a joy it's been to get to know them. And for them uh, to get to know each other, and then we met with the elders, and uh, just what a joy it was to be able to spend time with them. But that's just the beginning. We get to spend a lot more time together uh, as brothers and sisters in Christ, but also as members of this congregation together. So let's make this official. Let's do the formal liturgy of receiving you into the membership of the church. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask a question, and then you guys will recite together, because this would take forever, and I still want to preach today. So, um, so I'm going to ask one question. You're all going to say it together, and we'll see. It's probably going to sound like crazy, but... Just recite it together, and then I will ask the last one of each of you individually, and then I'll go through the line and, and I'll have an opportunity for you to say it individually, okay? So, do you believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and do you confess Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord? What is your answer together? Okay. Do you accept the Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments as the only rule for faith and life? Do you rely... On God's grace, promise to confess Christ publicly before others, to serve Christ daily, and to walk in the way of Jesus. Do you promise to exhibit the joy of new life in Christ, to share fully in the life of the church, to be faithful in worship and service, and to offer your prayers and gifts to the work of His kingdom? Do you promise to accept the spiritual guidance of the church, to walk in a spirit of Christian love with this congregation, and to seek those things which make for unity, purity, and peace? What is your answer? Well, be assured that as you declare your faith, God will be faithful to strengthen you and to renew you by His Holy Spirit, that you may grow in grace and truth so that you may keep this covenant of membership faithfully all of your days. Now for the reading of our membership covenant afterwards, I will uh, ask each of you to declare this uh, individually, and the answer will be, I will, and I ask God to help me. So having received 
or having experienced the grace of God in abundance, having responded to His love by placing your faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, and being in harmony with the mission, methods, and ministries of Brunswick Reformed Church, do you now believe yourself to be called by God to commit to the church family of BRC? In so doing, do you give yourself wholeheartedly to God and join the other members of the church in the following commitments? Will you protect the unity of this church by acting in love towards other members, by refusing to gossip and by following the leaders as they follow God? Will you share in the responsibilities of the church by praying for its growth, by inviting the unchurched to attend, and by warmly welcoming those who come? Will you serve the ministry of this church by discovering your gifts and talents, by being equipped by the leadership to serve, and by developing a servant's heart? And will you enhance the impact of this church by attending faithfully, by living a godly life, and by giving regularly. What is your answer? Adam? I will, and I ask God to help me. Jeremy? I will, and I ask God to help me. Leslie? I will, and I ask God to help me. Jamie? I will, and I ask God to help me. Melissa? I will, and I ask God to help me. Stephanie? I will, and I ask God to help me. Stephanie? I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. Chase? I will, and I ask God to help me. Paul? I will, and I ask God to help me. Well, it is my great privilege as the pastor of the church to welcome these new members into the active membership of Brunswick Reform Church. Welcome, Chase. And as a church family, we can't invite and accept new members into our family without having a party. So we got a cake. So welcome to the BRC family, and we will partake after the service. <laughs> so again, welcome officially to our church family. We're so glad that you're with us, and uh, we're so glad to see what God is going to do with us joined together, serving Him. Thanks so much. All right, you can be seated. Now, kids, thanks for staying and being a part of that uh, official receiving of new members. One day, even if you've been baptized, you will be accepted into this church family, and so officially as a confessing member. And so we're excited for you to see that, but I know you're excited to go back and worship and continue to learn with your friends. So go ahead. Kids, you're dismissed. All right. That's a hard act to follow, but good morning, church. If you would, please fill out your welcome cards, drop them in the offering plate later on in the service. Thank you to everyone who participated in the picnic last week and also the evangelism seminar yesterday. Uh, they were very different but equally amazing events, so thank you all who came and were a part of that. Next week is our last gathering service, wrapping up this Experiencing God Discipleship Go initiative, so there will just be one service. Please, uh, if you normally go to the 9, but you came to 1030 today, do it again next week, because that's the only service we've got. So, All right, kids that just left, uh, our regular Sunday school start. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, uh, our regular Sunday school starts Sunday, September 8th. Parents, please register your child. Uh, please update our records that we do every year, and on our website, check the list outside Michelle's office to make sure that we have the, your kids in the correct grades. Are you ready for some football? Yes. All right. Once again, you could do much better than the 9 o'clock service. They don't care about football as much as I do. So once again, it is time for our BRC Fantasy Football Leagues to take place. So if you are interested in playing with us, for either for the first time or want to come back again for some more like last year, uh, you are, uh, please write Fantasy Football on your welcome card unless you already emailed and responded to the email um, that, you, that for Michelle, then we already have you on our list. Uh, we'll be deciding a, a date for the draft very, very soon once we know about how many people we're looking at. So put fantasy football on your welcome card if you would like to do that. 
All right, save the date, Thursday, September 12th at 7 p.m. Do not miss the Children of the World Choir as they come, sing, and dance, and share how their lives have been changed uh, by international sponsorship. This concert is free. Uh, we do have a free will offering that takes place during the concert, but if you've never been to one of these before, these are amazing, amazing shows. So please plan on being there. Also, for this, to be able to have them here, we're looking for host families for the choir for Thursday night. Uh, please write host on your welcome card if you are interested in having some of these wonderful kids or their chaperones stay with you at your house Thursday night into Friday. Next Sunday, there will be a meeting for any man interested in teaming on the next Men's Renewal Weekend. Please plan on attending this meeting after church next Sunday if you are interested and you have attended a, a Men's Renewal in the past. Anyone is welcome to come and join us as we form the next team. Um, and I know we weren't supposed to say this now, but I'll do it anyway. If you happen to see Bob Hanwell in the next few days, wish Bob a happy 90th birthday. Next Sunday is his 90th birthday. So we had two cakes today, one for Bob's birthday and then one for our new members, which is wonderful. That's all I've got. Well, let us stand together and continue to worship our great God together as, uh, as a church family. You know, Jay, he's very excited about uh, fantasy football because he's hoping to get back to the Super Bowl and redeem himself for losing to me last year. So, <laughs> Okay, let's worship God together. Um, let's sing him Give praise. Jesus. <laughs> Give me Jesus. Let's, uh, let's sing.
Let us bow our heads in prayer this morning to the Lord. Dear Lord, the song, the words from this song clearly give us our prayer. They spell out the reality for us. When we wake up in the morning, when we rise, we need Jesus. Throughout our days, each day, especially when we're alone, we know that we need Jesus. When it's time for us to leave this world and our work is done, we know that we truly need Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for being all that we need. We come this morning to give you praise. We come to praise your holy name, to say thank you for providing for us. Thank you for providing all that we need. We thank you for your blessings. We ask this morning that you bless our pastor as he delivers your word to us. Teach us, dear Father. Teach us to take this word and to spread this good news to all that we meet today and throughout this week. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for new members for this church. We ask that you bless them. We ask that you be with them, especially these, these first few days. Let us welcome them with open arms. We thank you for them. We ask these things today in your holy name. Amen. You may be seated. Let us turn in our Bibles to Matthew chapter 16. Looking at uh, chapter 16 of Matthew today, uh, I'll be reading verses 24 through 27, uh, but let me uh, say a few words about the context, the, the verses that precede the text that we will read together. Matthew chapter 16, it's an, it's an interesting chapter, and so it starts out in the first couple of verses, uh, Jesus is, is speaking to his disciples about the Pharisees and the Sadducees. You remember them? Those, those people groups that were kind of like the, the religious elite, they thought they had it all together. They thought they had it all figured out. They thought they were living it out exactly the way God would have them want to live out. But Jesus continually singled them out and spoke to them and said, you don't get it. You're missing it. The way you are living, the way you are applying my word and truth is not right. And so he often would, would call them out and say, you're off base on this. So he, he's speaking to the disciples about the Pharisees and the Sadducees and that reality. Then in verse 13, he asked the disciples a question. He says, who do people say that I am? You know this text, right? So Jesus asked the question, and Peter, he speaks up, and he says, you're the Christ. You're the Son of the living God. And it's just like this triumphant moment of Peter getting it. And Jesus says, that's exactly right. But flesh and blood have not revealed that to you, but my Father has revealed that to you. And upon this rock I will build my church. It's such a great text. But then immediately following those verses, we see in verse 21 that we see this encounter with Jesus and Peter again. And Jesus is saying, why I'm here is for the purpose of going to the cross, to lay down my life. And Peter says, whoa, 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 whoa wait a minute. 
No, that's not your, that's not the plan. That's not your purpose. No, 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 Jesus, that's, that's not it. I got a different plan for you. And how does Jesus respond to Peter? Get thee behind me, Satan, for you don't have in mind the things of God. What a crazy passage. It starts with Jesus telling his disciples, beware of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They think they get it, but they don't. And then Peter declares, he confesses this truth that Jesus is the Christ, and Jesus says, exactly right. And then that's followed up with Peter saying, no, 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 that, that's not what you're supposed to be doing. That's not what I signed up for either. And then Jesus saying to Peter, you don't get it. And he says so sternly, the things that you have in mind are the things of the evil one. So get thee behind me, Satan. And then we pick up the verses for us this morning, verses 20 through 24 through 27. It says, then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and yet forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with His angels in the glory of His Father, and then He will repay each person according to what He has done. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the words of our God abide, they last, they endure forever. I don't know about you, but over this past week, I've asked myself several times, what happened to summer? Now, I know we still have the weather. The weather's still nice. But for my family, summer's over because school has started. And I can't believe that the summer has gone by so fast and that my kids are back in school already. So if you're, you know, not attending Brunswick School Systems and you still have a few weeks or a few days, enjoy it, but, you know, don't rub it in, okay? <laughs> One thing that I have learned over the years is that with the changing of the seasons comes changes in our lives. And it's true with the weather, the changing of the seasons that way. I don't even want to say it, but snow is coming. <laughs> that is not good. That is not okay. Unless you're an HVAC guy and you get paid to, to fix furnaces. We don't want to acknowledge that fact, but the snow will come, the season will change, and we'll have to change with it. No more wearing shorts and t-shirts and flip-flops. Well, some crazy... People still wear flip-flops in the wintertime. But we'll have to break out our winter coats and our winter clothes, and we'll have to change with it. With the changing of the seasons comes changes in our lives. It's also true with how we live in the circumstances of life. As seasons change in our lives, just like the weather, we got to be ready to change with it and to make the adjustments necessary. Well, let me just uh, use my family as an example. So the season of my family just having two elementary age kids in our house is over. That season has changed. We now have a middle schooler. We have an elementary school kid. And we have a four-month-old baby. <laughs> that ship has sailed of two kids in elementary school. That season has changed. The season of having extra hands to help out with the baby at home has also changed. So Lily was born right leading into the summertime, and our two older kids have been home all summer long. So we've had the help, the assistance 
of our older children to hold the baby, to feed the baby, to change the baby, to do all those things. And then on Tuesday, all of that stopped. <laughs> because now they're at school for six or seven hours a day. And unfortunately, that's normally the hours I'm away at work as well. And so my wife has to figure out what it's like now again to change with the season of, okay, now I don't have the assistance, the help of my older, older two kids. And they have done a phenomenal job. That's why it's such an abrupt change. <laughs> like, oh, yes, I guess the baby's crying. There's no other person to pick her up than, than me. The season of having time, just Kristen and me together, has changed. So I've heard people say, why did you want to have a third kid? You had it made. Like, they were both in school. Like, you had all that, you know, Mondays are my day off. So, obviously, I work Sundays, so I take Mondays off. And so, if my wife isn't working, the kids would go off to school. And we'd be able to spend the day together and, and, and enjoy each other's company on this day off together. Well, that has now changed again. Because the baby doesn't go off to school. And the baby needs to still be fed every three hours. The baby still needs to be changed. And the baby can't just pick up and, and, hey, let's go to Columbus today or something that way. Like, things have changed. Our season of life has changed. And change in our lives will come along with it. So maybe you can relate. If you are a family with school-age kids, raise your hand. School-age kids. Have you had any adjustments in your life this week as they have gone back to school? Yes, things have changed. If you're a family with a baby, baby or a toddler at home, we have a few of those in our congregation. Have things changed in your life recently? Have you had to make adjustments to a baby in the house again? Or for the first time? Yes. If you've gotten married over the last year, have you had to make any adjustments to your everyday life? I would say probably so, with the exception maybe for Adam and Melissa. They just got back from their honeymoon last night, so maybe the adjustments haven't come yet, but they will. They will. In the last service, uh, Bob and Nancy Hanwell, he's celebrating his 90th birthday this week, but they're also celebrating 66 years of marriage this year. Yeah. And I said, have you guys had to make any adjustments in those years of marriage? <laughs> and I got an overwhelming yes. Because we know if we've been there, that it's true. No matter what the stage of life that you are in, no matter what season, life is filled with making adjustments to the changing of the seasons. So whether you're getting married or having a baby or going back to school, starting a new, a new job, retiring from a job, choosing to live in Ohio with the changing weather, the fact remains, change is coming. So be ready to make the adjustments necessary. We may not know what those adjustments will look like when they come, what changes in our lifestyle or our time management or our energy levels or our relationships or our money management. We may not know what that will look like when those adjustments come. But change is coming. And with the changing of the season, the question is, what adjustments will need to be made to accompany that change? If making adjustments is required in the areas of life that I've already shared and talked about, isn't it also true that adjustments are needed in the area of our faith journey as well? As we read the New Testament, it's clear that choosing to be a follower of Jesus will require adjusting how we live our lives. Along with that, choosing to follow God's will will require adjustments in our lives as well. Because His ways are 
not our ways. His ways are higher than our ways, beyond our ability to trace out. And so if we are going to live into God's will, we have to accept the fact that God's will is, is going to be different than ours. So adjustment will have to take place. It's also true that choosing to become a member of the church, the church of Jesus Christ, adjustments will need to be made. Because now you are a part of the body of Christ. You are part of the bride of Christ. You have a new identity. And you get to live into that. We had 11 people join our church family today. And adjustments will need to be made in their lives too as now new members of our church family. And adjustments will need to be made in our lives to welcome them and accept them in to our family. Jesus said in our scripture this morning, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Does that sound like a need to make adjustments in our lives to live that out? Yes, head nods, yes. To deny ourselves, to take up our cross, and to follow Jesus? Sounds like major adjustments that need to take place. And this is just one verse. That Jesus says, if you're going to be my follower, if you're going to come after me, if you're going to be my disciple, there's three major adjustments that are needed in your life. Number one, you must deny yourself. Well, sign me up for that one. That sounds like fun. But Jesus said it, not me. And to follow Jesus is to be a disciple of Jesus. And discipleship is a call to self-denial. Not a denial of our identity as a person, not our personhood, of who we are created uniquely into the image of God. It's not denying that fact. But it's a denial of the desires of our flesh, our selfish and sinful nature that each one of us are born into. To be a follower of Jesus is to declare, it's not all about me anymore. It's not about what I think or what I want Similar to choosing to have a baby, in following Jesus, you are choosing to deny that your life is your own to live. <laughs> I mean, how many times have you heard somebody say, you're having a baby, whoo, your life's over. <laughs> <laughs> your life is not going to be your own anymore. I see some rolling of the eyes. And <laughs> but it's true. I mean, the reality is life has drastically changed for us again in the Toot household now that we have a baby in the house. And things that we used to be able to do, we can't do. And things have to change because it's not just about us any longer. We have to care for this child that cannot care for herself. Our lives become about living for another. And that's just as true of having a baby is, is living into the Christian life. That we are called to live for another. If your life looks exactly the same after having a child, something's wrong there. So too is a life that doesn't change after becoming a Christian. I know some people, some friends, some even family members that have said, we're not having children right now because we don't want our lives to change. We don't want the inconvenience. Now that sounds harsh, but they're being honest saying, I like life right now, and I know that if we have a baby, all that's going to change. <laughs> and I don't want it to. 
I know there's people out there that don't want to follow Jesus, don't want to come to church, don't want to give their life to Christ because they know life will need to change. And they don't want that yet. They like how they're living. They want to continue doing what they want to do. But Jesus said, if you are to follow after me, you must deny yourself. Making adjustments away from self-serving to God-serving is essential in the Christian life. Well, number two, if we're going to follow Christ, if, if we're going to follow after Him, we must take up our cross. You must walk the path of sacrifice. It's not just about denying yourself. It's about laying yourself down for the sake of another. Matthew 20, 28 says that the Son of Man, Jesus, did not come into this world to be served. If anybody should have been about himself, I'm God in the flesh. I'm the King of kings, the Lord of lords. I was the one that everything that has been made in creation was created through me. But Jesus said, and what was said about Jesus is that the Son of Man did not come into this world to be served, but to serve and to give His life as a ransom for many. This is the model that Jesus has laid out for us to follow. And so if we're going to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, or if we're really going to be Christians, Jesus followers... It's the way of the cross. For Jesus, it meant crucifixion, literally giving his life for us. For us, it means putting God's will above our own and choosing to live that out, his will for our lives, not our own will for our lives, but God's will to live that out no matter the cost to us. That's what, means, what it means to pick up your cross, to sacrifice, even if it would mean giving up our very lives. But look at the promise we receive, verse 25 in our text. For whoever would save his life, whoever says, no, I'm not willing to, to take up my cross, I just want to keep my life the same because I, I like the way things are going, Jesus says, whoever would save his life, try to save that and keep it intact and hold it close, you lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. If you sacrifice for my behalf, if you make it about me, you will find life and life more abundant, and life eternal. But it takes sacrifice and laying down our lives. You know what I think? I think cross-bearing is a lot like marriage. Cue the laugh. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, you guys are still here. That was my, you know, interjecting some humor, but again, failed miserably. Cross-bearing is a lot like marriage? Come on, that's funny. <laughs> but think about it. What do we do when we stand on a stage on our wedding day for family and friends and for God? We make a vow for better or for worse, for richer for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish as long as we both shall live. Before God and these witnesses, 
I pledge myself to this covenant. Is it much different than what our new members vowed and declared today? It's much different than what you and I declare when we say, I give my life to you, Lord. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and health, no matter what, I'm in this for the long haul. And if it costs me my life, so be it. Because I will love and cherish you as long as I live. See, it wasn't a joke. It's a great parallel. And it wasn't mine. The Apostle Paul in Ephesians compares this love between a husband and a wife to be much like the love of Christ and His bride, the church. Are we willing to lay down our lives for our spouse? And are we willing to lay down our lives for our Savior and our Lord, Jesus? That's what taking up your cross means. Jesus, for the joy set before him, endured the cross, scorning its shame, Hebrews says. Can we say, for the joy set before us, we too will lay down our lives? Doesn't mean you're going to have to. I pray that none of us have to lose our lives, physically speaking, as martyrs for the kingdom of God. But are we willing to? That's what we're called to. Well, number three, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and thirdly, and follow me, Jesus said. Jesus is not just sitting around in heaven waiting for the second coming to happen. And neither should we. To follow Jesus is a call to obey all that He commands of us in Scripture and to follow the example He has given us in His earthly life. And we have a beautiful picture of what that life looked like in the Gospels. Do we ask God as we read, teach us what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Show us what it looks like in the example of Jesus. And help me apply it to my life. Help me to make the adjustments necessary to be the person God calls me to be in this world. To make this adjustment of following Jesus is to do what all of our school-age kids do every day at school. At least they should be. What are they there to do? To learn, right? Because they're kids, they don't know these things yet. They don't know how to do algebra. So, they have to be taught. And what do they need? They need a teacher to not only tell them what to do, but to take on the board and show them how to do it. This is how you do it, and let me show you how it's done. The problem is, as adults, we're like, hey, we're done with school. That season has passed, right? I'm not going back to school. I've learned all that. How often does that equate in the way we think about the Christian life? I know what it means to be a Christian. I know what it means to have faith in Jesus. And we think because we, we know all that, that we're good to go. Where did chapter 16 start? Jesus, beware the Pharisees, the Sadducees. They thought they knew it all too. Peter, great job proclaiming me as the Christ, the Son of the living God. It's upon that rock that I'm going to build my church. 
But right after that, he, he got off track. No, that's not what it means, you know, to follow you, Jesus. That's not what you're supposed to do. And Jesus has to bring them back. If anyone are, is to come after me, they must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. None of us have a Ph.D. in living out the Christian life. If anybody you would say is close, maybe the Apostle Paul. But even Paul said, I know nothing except for what Christ has revealed to me. We continually need a teacher and a model to follow after. And thankfully, Jesus provides us with both. He provides us with how to live it. And then he gives us an example of what it looks like being lived out. This whole Discipleship Go initiative that we have been involved in together this summer. This book, Experiencing God, that we've been reading together this summer as a church. is all about the tagline. Knowing and doing the will of God. Well, how do we know it? How do we do it? We need to continually be taught and then shown what it means to follow after Jesus, to be a disciple following the way of Jesus. Making adjustments to align ourselves with God's will takes effort, takes work, doesn't come naturally. God will do His part, but are we willing to do ours? Philippians 2, 12 and 13 says this, and I want you to pay attention to the order. Therefore, my beloved, Paul is speaking here, as you have always obeyed, so now not only in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to work for His good pleasure. What's Paul saying to the church? He's saying God's going to be doing His work. God is going to work things out according to His will, His good purpose, according to His good pleasure. But He does that as we are working. And it's interesting, the order. Paul says, you focus on working out your salvation, putting into practice the things that you are learning. You've learned them. You've received them. Now go live that out. And as you do, you will see God's presence and His power at work in your life to will and to do according to His good pleasure. God's doing the work. But you see it, you experience it, and you live it out as you Work out that salvation in your life every day. Henry Blackaby writes in chapter 17, the chapter that we're on, you can't stay where you are and go with God in obedience to His will. You can't stay where you are and go with God in obedience to His will. And he goes on to say, to go from your ways, thoughts, and purposes to God's will always requires adjustments. These may call for changes in your circumstances, your relationships, your attitudes, your commitments, your behavior, and beliefs. Once you have made the necessary changes, then you can follow God obediently. But keep in mind, the God who calls you is also the one who will enable you to do His will. God is working, but so are we. He says, when you surrender everything in your life to Christ's Lordship, you will find the adjustments well worth the reward of experiencing God in your life. If you have not reached a point where you have surrendered everything, 
Decide today to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Him. Let's pray. Lord, we've heard the cliche, the only constant is change. And we see that reality all around us. Change is always happening. The question is, is how are we responding to the changes in our lives? What adjustments are we making, are we willing to make to respond to that change? Lord, you have done a work of change in our lives. If we are believers, if we are in Christ, if we are Christians today, it's because you have done a good work of regeneration the old is gone, the new has come. And just as we proclaimed in the Heidelberg Catechism questions, there's this dying away of the old self and the coming to life of the new. And that takes work. It takes you to be doing that work in us, but it takes us making the adjustments needed to live into the change that you've begun, that you are doing, and that you will see to completion in the day of Christ Jesus. Lord, I pray that we would be a people, a church, that are following in the footsteps of Jesus. And we've been given this verse to help us to know what that looks like. So Lord, help us to deny ourselves, to pick up our cross, and to follow Christ. It's in His name that we pray. Amen. Let us respond by the giving of our tithes and our offerings as an act of worship to Him. And as we do so, Pastor Jay will share a few prayer concerns and a prayer with us. As always, if you're struggling with anything or uh, you just need someone to pray with you, some elders will be available here up by the front by the piano to pray with you one-on-one -on -one after the service. Uh, Michelle Kearns, a stepbrother in Arizona, had surgery last week and then had some complications, did have another surgery to correct that problem and appears to have been successful. He may even go home this weekend. So thank you, God, for that and pray for a speedy recovery for healing for Michelle as she pulled a muscle in her knee as well. Um, Pete and Andrea Nixon asked for prayers for their friend Mary. Uh, Mary um, was unconscious for a very long time, but we did get an update this uh, last night that she, Mary is now awake, still fighting the staph infection and sepsis, but they have ruled out meningitis and MRSA, but the doctors are still worried about maybe a heart or lung issue. She was responsive a little bit, able to wiggle her toes, uh, but still has a long way to come. So please pray for her and her family at this time. Jeremy Jackson is scheduled to have a test on his liver this Thursday, so please lift him up in prayer for that. And then we've been, uh, we've been praying for Ryan Holzheimer's wife, Kelly. Um, she was having some blood pressure issues. Currently, her grandmother is almost ready to go be with Jesus, uh, so that's causing some more blood pressure issues. I saw uh, Yvonne this morning and said that she's retaking some medication, and that's balancing out. So praise God for that, but please continue to lift up Ryan and Kelly in your prayers. And then Charles Metcalf is asking for prayers as well. He had a procedure a couple of weeks ago to break up some large kidney stones uh, to relieve the intense pain he's been having for a long time. The procedure was a success, but he was unaware that he would be passing kidney stones for the next two to three weeks. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. Please, please pray that all the stones are gone and that the kidneys will heal as they've got some fairly large events coming up in the near future. So praying for them as well. Let's lift these up to our Lord. Father, we know that as we take up our cross and follow you, we're going to need to make some adjustments. Everything in life causes us to have to make some adjustments anytime change takes place. Father, we pray that you help us to be people who are okay with making adjustments. Pray for good attitudes and joy and smiles in the midst of these changes and, and trials even that come our way. Father, we just pray that we can daily pick up our cross and do your will and not ours. Help us to deny who we want to be 
so that you can make us who we need to be, which is always so much better, so much greater, and so much bigger than we have in mind for ourselves. Lord, we lift up to you those who are close to us that are struggling. So we thank you for uh, good surgery for Michelle Kearns' uh, stepbrother and pray for her speedy healing in her knee. We lift up uh, Mary to you, Father, from the Nixon family, her, their friend. We thank you that she is awake, but pray that you continue to bless her with the healing of the infections and that the doctors can figure out what's causing all of her problems. We lift up to you our brother Jeremy as he goes in for his liver test this week. Lord, be with him and the doctors as well. Be with Ryan's wife, Kelly, Father, as they, she goes through the loss of a grandmother, but at the same time still struggling with her blood pressure issues. And we lift up Charles to you, Lord, and we just pray that uh, he can continue to receive healing, continue to, that all the stones be gone, uh, and that he will heal in time for the good things that are coming in his life. Lord, we lift up to you those in our community who don't know you, who don't have a clue why we come to church on Sunday mornings and don't even know what it means to pick up their cross and follow you. Help us, Lord, to be the vessel, to speak to them, to tell them our story, so that they may come to know who you are. And Lord, we ask you to take these tithes and these offerings, give us discernment as a church to use the resources you have given to us to best bring about your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand as able.
Take it all, my life in your hands. Take it all, take it all, my life in your hands. Amen. You can't go with God and stay where you're at. God's on the move. Christ is at work bringing his kingdom to bear in this world. And he intends to do it through the work of his church, his body at work today, here and now. That's us. And so to the 11 new members of this church, welcome. And to all of us who call this church home and are a part of the church, it's more than just a place to go on Sunday morning. It's a people to become. It's a life to live out following after the life of Jesus. So let us be the church this week, every week. Let us deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow him. Let's close with the singing and the benediction. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, the discountenance upon you and give you peace and give you peace. Let's eat some cake.